The book's central message is that we often overreact and get stressed over trivial things that matter in the big picture. We must develop a perspective to not sweat the small stuff. The author shares 100 tips and insights to help cultivate this perspective and lead a more peaceful life. Some examples are practice patience, being grateful, doing small acts of kindness, living in the present moment, accepting life isn't always fair, choosing your battles wisely, etc. The inspiration for the title and central message of the book came from an incident where a publisher erroneously used an old endorsement from Dr. Wayne Dyer for the author's new book. Although the mistake caused initial frustration, Dr. Dyer's graceful response, don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff, resonated with the author. The key is to replace habits of overreaction and negative focus with ones of perspective, grace, and ease. This allows us to solve problems more efficiently and lead more prosperous lives. The book provides simple tips and techniques to cultivate this mindset and live in greater harmony with oneself and others. Developing this perspective can help transform how we relate to problems and stressful events. The key messages in the passage are Don't sweat the small stuff. Often we get worked up over insignificant things and blow them out of proportion. It's better to let go of minor annoyances and maintain inner peace. Make peace with imperfection. The quest for perfection leads to inner turmoil. Learn to appreciate life as it is instead of constantly focusing on what's wrong. Gentle, relaxed people can be high achievers too. Being fearful and frantic drains our energy and creativity. Inner peace enhances focus and productivity. Be aware of negative thought spirals. Catch yourself when your thoughts start spinning out of control, making you feel increasingly upset or overwhelmed. Stop the idea spiral before it gains momentum. Develop compassion for others. Make an effort to consider other people's perspectives and difficulties. Understanding enhances gratitude and helps gain perspective on one's trivial worries. Remember that material concerns fade away at the end of life. Focus on relationships, experiences, and making a positive difference instead of petty concerns or accumulating possessions. In summary, the key to a peaceful and meaningful life is gaining perspective, not sweating the small stuff, finding inner peace through self-acceptance, focusing outward on others with compassion, and remembering what matters. Letting go of negativity, judgment, and trivial concerns leads to harmony and tranquility. Your to-do list will always be complete. There will always be more things to do. But don't let that obsession take over your life. Make time for happiness, relationships, and enjoying the moment. Very little is genuinely urgent. Stay focused on priorities, and things will get done in time. Life is meant to be enjoyed, not just completed. Interrupting others and finishing their sentences is exhausting and damaging to relationships. It makes people feel unheard and disrespected. Catch yourself doing this and stop. Let others speak freely and listen to them. Your conversations and connections will improve. You'll feel more relaxed too. Do kind things for others without telling anyone about it. Don't seek approval or validation. Just do it for giving and you'll feel good. Keep the act private and enjoy those feelings yourself. Let others have attention and glory. Don't make everything about you. Share in other people's joy and accomplishments without turning the focus back to yourself. Listen without judgment and be happy for them. Your relationships will be better, and you'll develop quiet inner confidence. Live in the present moment. Don't dwell on the past or worry too much about the future. Be where you are now. Enjoy and appreciate each moment. Much fear and anxiety come from concern over what may happen, not what's happening now. Stay focused on the current moment. Imagine everyone else is enlightened except you. This helps combat ego and judgment. Assume you have more to learn from others. Be open, humble, and willing to understand other perspectives. You'll become less defensive and argumentative. Relationships will improve and you'll gain valuable insight. The key themes are, focus on what matters, like relationships and the present moment. Curb ego and judgment. Give more and seek less glory or validation. Listen without interruption. 
Developing these habits leads to better well-being, relationships, and quiet confidence from within. Everyone you encounter, including those who annoy or frustrate you, has something to teach you. Rather than reacting negatively to others' behaviors, determine what they are trying to teach you, such as patience, compassion, or tolerance. Seeing others this way can help reduce annoyance and frustration. Once you determine the lesson, letting go of negative feelings towards that person becomes more accessible. For example, a slow postal clerk may teach you patience, an impatient driver may teach you tolerance. Viewing others and situations this way can become a habit and help you approach life with less frustration and more peace. You may even come to appreciate what others are teaching you. Letting others be right most of the time and not needing to correct or prove them wrong can lead to better relationships and less negativity. It always takes a lot of energy to be correct, and it often alienates others. Save arguing for critical issues. Becoming more patient involves accepting the present moment and seeing the innocence in others and situations. With practice, patience can become a habit and lead to inner peace. One way to build patience is to create patience practice periods, short periods where you deliberately practice patience. Start with just 5 or 10 minutes at a time and build up from there. Success will breed more success. Being the first to act lovingly or reach out to others can heal relationships and break stubborn cycles of resentment or misunderstanding. While it may be difficult, it is often the healthiest choice. Acting this way demonstrates kindness, compassion, and forgiveness. The woman was unwilling to reach out to her son to apologize first due to her anger and pride. After some encouragement, she decided to call her son. To her surprise, he apologized, and they reconciled. Letting go of anger and reaching out leads to happiness and better relationships. Being right is less important than being at peace. Asking yourself if something will matter in a year helps you gain perspective and avoid unnecessary anger or stress. Most things we get worked up about will be fine in the long run. Life is not meant to be fair. Accepting this leads to less self-pity and more compassion. We can still work to improve things but with a balanced perspective. Allowing yourself to be bored, even for a short time each day, leads to relaxation and peace. Our minds need occasional breaks from constant stimulation. Lowering your tolerance for stress leads to less stress, not more. We often admire those who handle high pressure, which leads them to take on even more until they reach their limit. It's better to learn strategies to avoid excess pressure in the first place. In summary, the keys to a peaceful life are letting go of anger, gaining perspective, accepting life's unfairness, relaxing your mind, and avoiding excess stress. Reaching out to others and being flexible leads to better relationships and inner peace. Icing your stress early, before it gets out of control. Catching yourself getting too stressed out before and managing it when it's still small and manageable. Letting your stress level build up momentum makes it difficult to control. When your mind is moving too quickly, or your schedule is getting out of hand, slow down and re-evaluate. Take a step back to regain perspective rather than powering through. Relaxing, taking deep breaths, and going for a short walk can help when feeling out of control and resentful. Your mind will be more precise, and you'll be more effective and able to have more fun. Reducing your stress tolerance will mean having less stress to deal with. Writing a heartfelt letter once a week to express gratitude and love can help change your life by slowing you down filling you with gratitude, and focusing on what's right. Even if you don't send the letter, writing it helps shift your mindset. Imagining your funeral helps provide perspective on what's essential in your life. It gives you a chance to re-examine your priorities and make crucial changes. Repeating life isn't an emergency helps combat the tendency to turn little things into crises and remind yourself that life will go on if things don't go perfectly. Using your back burner by allowing your mind to work on a problem in the background without actively focusing. Gently holding the pain in your mind allows your mind to solve the problem with less stress and effort. Spending a moment each day thinking of someone to feel grateful for helps cultivate gratitude and inner peace. Make it a habit to start your day focusing on who and what you're thankful for. Gratitude combats negativity and enables you to appreciate the good in your life. Being grateful and focusing on feelings of peace and calmness makes it challenging to feel negative. Practicing the following strategies can help cultivate inner peace. 
smile, make eye contact, and greet strangers. This helps to build connections and fosters compassion. Set aside quiet time each day to reflect. Spending time alone in solitude reduces stress and increases happiness and contentment. Imagine people in your life as infants and 100-year-olds. This helps to gain perspective and compassion, releasing negative feelings toward others. Seek first to understand others. Focus on understanding people rather than being understood. This leads to better communication and relationships. Become a better listener. Slow down, avoid interrupting, and listen to understand. This reduces pressure, enhances relationships, and leads to more extraordinary patience. Choose your battles wisely. Take your time with small things. Save your energy for essential issues. This leads to less frustration and more inner peace. In summary, nurturing compassion, solitude, understanding, patience, and choosing what matters can help cultivate an inner state of peace. Letting go of negativity and minor frustrations leads to greater happiness and contentment. The key message is that you can lose perspective and get caught up in petty issues and disagreements in the minutiae of daily life. This can lead to unhappiness and frustration. Life rarely goes exactly as we want, and we must accept that. We should choose our battles wisely and not sweat the small stuff. Our moods constantly change, and we must be aware of how they influence our outlook. Everything seems worse when we're in a bad mood, but that perception is deceptive. Life is usually not as bad as it appears in those moments. We have to maintain perspective. Similarly, we should view life's challenges and difficulties as tests rather than seriously threatening. We can grow and rise above them if we see them as tests. This helps us not take life so seriously. Finally, we must accept that we can only please some or win everyone's approval. Praise and blame are all the same in that sense. The sooner we assume that, the easier life becomes. We can't depend on the support of others for our well-being. One recommendation is to practice random acts of kindness. This helps us gain perspective and connect with deeper feelings of compassion. The message is about achieving a balanced and wise outlook on life's difficulties and maintaining inner tranquility. The joy of giving without the expectation of reward is best practiced anonymously. Random acts of kindness, like paying for the car behind you at a toll booth, can cheer up strangers and create a chain reaction of goodwill. Giving freely brings happiness to the giver. We should look beyond others' behavior and see their innocence and good intentions. This fosters compassion and diffuses frustration with people who act in annoying ways. It is better to be kind than to be right. Correcting others often stems from ego and rarely makes us feel good. Choosing kindness leads to peace of mind for ourselves and others. Expressing love and appreciation for people in our lives should not be delayed. Make three phone calls today to tell people how much you love them. Practicing humility, letting go of the need to prove our worth or accomplishments, also cultivates inner peace. Bragging and ego deflate positive feelings. Accepting ourselves as imperfect beings with strengths and weaknesses leads to contentment. Judging ourselves and others harshly creates inner turmoil. Practicing humility through openness, humor, and self-acceptance leads to serenity. The key message is that seeking external validation or approval through boasting about your accomplishments often backfires. Ironically, displaying humility and inner confidence draws more genuine support and admiration from others. The author recommends practicing humility by resisting the urge to brag when opportunities arise. He shares an example of a client who was promoted at work but resisted telling his friends about it, especially since another friend was passed over for the promotion. His friends were impressed with his humility and judgment by not boasting or gloating when they eventually found out. In summary, the key points are Seeking approval through bragging often backfires and turns people off. True humility and inner confidence are more appealing and admirable to others. You can develop humility by practicing it, resist bragging and boasting when the urge arises. Staying humble allows you to share accomplishments from the heart, not ego. Practicing humility leads to feeling calm and proud of yourself. Being humble draws more positive feedback and approval from others, not less. Choosing not to brag or boast says nothing about others but defines you as humble. 
Does this summary accurately reflect the key messages and points in the original response? Let me know if you want me to clarify or expand the resume in any way. The author used to give judgmental explanations to her daughter about people who were different. Pretending to be an anthropologist changed her perspective and made her softer. Now she acknowledges that people are other, and it's interesting. When you are open to other perspectives, it doesn't mean you advocate for them. The author wouldn't choose a punk rock lifestyle, but she realizes it's not her place to judge. Judging others takes up a lot of energy and prevents happiness. The principle of separate realities means that individuals differ as much as cultures. We should understand and respect these differences. This can reduce conflict and increase compassion. Developing helping rituals, like picking up litter, is a way to spread peace and kindness. They are assisting traditions to benefit everyone involved. Tell at least one person something you like, admire, or appreciate about them daily. This takes little effort but has big rewards. Many people wish for compliments and positive feedback. Offering a sincere compliment also feels good to the giver. Arguing for your limitations makes them real. Our minds are influential, and what we tell ourselves shapes our reality. To achieve anything, silence your self-doubt. Replace negative habits of arguing for limitations with more positive habits. See God's beauty in all things, not just beautiful things. Look for holiness under challenging circumstances too. When you seek to see God's fingerprints in all things, you'll feel more peace and notice more blessings. God created all, even what we can't currently see beauty in. Criticizing others says more about our need to criticize than the people we are charging. It solves nothing and contributes to anger and distrust. The urge to criticize is a bad habit. We get used to doing it, and it gives us something to talk about, but it makes us feel ashamed afterward. We should catch ourselves criticizing and turn it into tolerance. We should write down our most stubborn positions and try to soften them. Becoming gentler makes us wiser and more robust. Stubbornness muddles our objectivity. Agreeing with criticism at us diffuses the situation and allows one to remain calm. We can learn from it, and the complaint often goes away. Reacting defensively never makes criticism go away. We should search for the grain of truth in other opinions rather than judging or dismissing them. This helps us understand others, attracts people to us, enhances our learning, and makes us feel better about ourselves. We should see everything as impermanent and already broken. This gives us perspective and allows us to appreciate life. When things break, we are not surprised or disappointed. We feel grateful for the time we had. Wherever we go, we bring ourselves with us. We think we'd be happier in different circumstances, but we wouldn't. Our mental habits follow us. The only way to be happy is to work on ourselves, not change our surroundings. The key message is that we should avoid criticism and judgment of others, as well as stubbornness and wish for different circumstances. We should look for truth and lessons in separate opinions, accept impermanence, and work on ourselves. Changing our surroundings will make us miserable. Your inner state determines your outer experiences. If you are generally peaceful, you will have fewer negative experiences as you go through life. But if you are often annoyed or bothered, you will likely perceive more negativity in your experiences and interactions. We carry our inner state with us wherever we go. Wherever you go, there you are. The outside world is a reflection of our inner world. Pausing or breathing before responding to someone makes us more present, patient, and understanding. It leads to improved communication and relationships. Happy people are grateful when they feel good but also graceful when they feel bad. They accept both positive and negative emotions as temporary and passing. Fighting or resisting negative emotions often makes the situation worse. Taking them allows us to move on more quickly. Driving aggressively creates danger and stress and saves little time. Driving peacefully allows us to use the time to relax and de-stress. We can arrive at our destination calmer than when we started. Relaxation is an inner quality we can access at any time. It does not depend on external circumstances. Relaxed people can be high achievers. Relaxation enhances creativity and flow. 
We can learn to respond to life's dramas in a more mellow, less reactive way through patience and practice. Relaxation comes from relating to our thinking and circumstances in new ways. We can remind ourselves we have a choice in how we respond to life. Adopting confident choices and habits can help cultivate a more relaxed self. Adopt a child through a charity to build connection and gratitude. Caring for others fosters calm. Avoid turning small things into melodramas. Remind yourself life is not an emergency to stay mellow. Read perspectives different from your own. Opening your mind reduces stress and stubbornness. You can learn from different views without changing your core beliefs. Do one thing at a time. Focus on the present activity. You'll enjoy and accomplish more by avoiding distraction. Count to 10 when angry or stressed. Pausing and deep breathing help you gain perspective and calm down. Practice staying calm in the chaos. You can be the eye of any storm by remaining peaceful despite the turmoil. Breathing helps you gain perspective and calm down. You can achieve anything if you set your mind to it. Start with small, low-pressure scenarios and build up your confidence and skills. Stay focused on the present moment. With practice, you can handle even complex life events with grace. Be flexible in your plans and priorities. Rigidity causes stress. Learn to go with the flow. Ask yourself what matters in each situation. Expect that some projects will change. Trust that you will still achieve your most important goals. Appreciate what you have rather than covet what you don't have. Dissatisfaction comes from constantly wanting more. Notice your blessings and be grateful for them. Happiness comes from within, not from getting what you want. Learn to ignore negative and worrisome thoughts. You have thousands of views each day, and many will be negative. You can't control all your thoughts, but you can choose which ones to dwell on. Practice dismissing anxious thoughts instead of meditating on them. Be open to learning from close friends and family. Those who know you best often have insight into your blind spots. Let go of ego and stubbornness, and ask loved ones for their advice and observations about you. Valuing their input can lead to growth and strengthen your relationships. Being happy now rather than postponing happiness to some future time leads to greater peace and contentment. Repeatedly practicing patience, compassion, and kindness shapes your character and life experiences. Quieting your mind through meditation or yoga helps reduce reactivity, stress, and irritability while promoting inner peace. Making service to others an integral part of your life fosters kindness and generosity. Tiny, unnoticed acts of kindness in day-to-day -day life accumulate to shape your character and spread more love in the world. In short, cultivating peace and kindness in yourself and spreading it to others through service and compassionate action leads to a happier, more meaningful life. Focusing on the present, quieting your mind, and making service a habit are effective strategies for personal growth and developing wisdom. Being supportive daily, whether by listening to or assisting my spouse with a new endeavor, brings me closer to becoming more selfless. While I still have a long way to go, incorporating service into my life has made me feel better about how I choose to live. Helping others provides its reward through the peace and fulfillment it brings. The more you give of yourself freely, the more inner peace you will gain. Rather than keeping score or expecting reciprocity when doing good deeds, do favors without asking for or expecting anything in return. This helps integrate service into your life by showing how good it feels to help others unconditionally. Notice and dismiss thoughts of expecting reciprocation. The warm feeling from selfless giving is reward enough. View your problems as potential teachers instead of sources of stress. Accept them as inevitable parts of life and look for the lessons they contain. This softens their perceived severity and reduces associated stress and struggle. Once tasks are learned, problems often resolve themselves. Become comfortable with uncertainty and not knowing what the future may hold. While we often believe the worst about situations, we do not have the whole picture. If we remain open-minded and patient, things usually work out for the best. Acknowledge all aspects of yourself, both positive and negative, instead of pretending to be perfect. This allows self-compassion and makes perceived shortcomings and complicated feelings easier to move past. 
When you open to the totality of your being, you gain awareness of your inherent wisdom, strength, and other positive qualities along with the rest. Give yourself a break. We are all imperfect beings, so practice self-acceptance and loving-kindness instead of harsh self-judgment. Reduce unrealistic expectations of yourself. With self-compassion, perceived faults and mistakes become more okay. Focus on progress over perfection. Incorporate more gentleness, patience, and humor into your relationship with yourself. The critical message of the book is to help you become more relaxed, peaceful, and loving. However, don't aim for perfection. Be gentle with yourself when you make mistakes and slip up. See them as learning opportunities. Life is a process, so start over when you lose your way. Don't get too concerned about how well you're doing. Just keep practicing the strategies and do your best. No one is perfect, so cut yourself some slack. Learn to stay loving toward yourself even when you prove you're human. Stop blaming others for your unhappiness and problems. Take responsibility for your happiness and reactions. Blaming others is draining and makes you feel powerless. When you stop blaming others, you regain your power of choice and the ability to create positive feelings. Becoming an early riser and reserving time for yourself in the morning can help combat fatigue and bring more fulfillment and peace to your life. Use the time to do quiet activities like yoga, reading, or enjoying nature. Start your day on your terms. Focus on doing small acts of kindness and service instead of trying to do big, grand things. Little things done with love can make a big difference. Look for ways to help others, like volunteering, donating, or doing random acts of kindness. Remember that 100 years from now, all new people will be on the planet. This perspective can help reduce stress and bring more peace of mind. Most of life's little problems and crises won't matter in the long run. Take a 100-year view to gain a deeper perspective. Two people showed up at the same time for the same appointment. The author avoided getting overly stressed by remembering that in 100 years, no one will care about or remember this minor issue. The author calmly took responsibility for the scheduling error. One person was happy to reschedule their appointment. As usual, this was a minor issue that could have easily been turned into a bigger deal, but the author kept perspective. The key points are Keeping a long-term perspective helps reduce stress over minor issues. Calmly taking responsibility is a practical approach. Small stuff does not need to become big stuff if you maintain the proper perspective. Here is a summary of the key points. Short-term goals and external accomplishments are not the most meaningful or important. Things like inner peace, happiness, and kindness are more significant. Redefine your accomplishments to focus on kindness, calmness, and forgiveness. Measure your success based on who you are and how much love you have, not what you do. Listen to your feelings, they act as a guidance system. Negative emotions mean you are off track and need to ease up on your thinking. Don't analyze them, use them to guide you back to serenity. You don't have to catch every ball thrown at you. You can choose not to get involved in other people's dramas and problems. Learn to say no in a kind way. Realize that everything is temporary good and evil, pleasure and pain. Embrace the truth that all experiences end to find peace. Disappointment comes from fighting this truth. Fill your life with love by becoming a source of love yourself. Focus on giving love rather than getting it. The more you give, the more you will receive. Love begets love. Recognize the power of your intentions and choices. The shortest path to a life of love is setting the intention and committing to being a source of love through your attitude and actions. Your thoughts directly impact how you feel. There is a direct relationship between your thinking and your emotions. Negative thoughts lead to negative feelings. Positive reviews lead to positive feelings. You are constantly thinking, even if you're unaware. These thoughts often happen in the background, and you forget them, but they still impact your mood and emotions. It's difficult, if not impossible, to feel a particular emotion without first having thoughts that evoke that emotion. You can't feel stressed without stressful thoughts or angry without angry thoughts. Unhappiness comes from negative thoughts, not external circumstances. Remember that your negative thoughts are causing unhappiness, not your life conditions. 
you can change your thoughts and improve your mood. More is not always better. Constantly wanting more and more leads to dissatisfaction and longing. Appreciate what you have and practice being content. Your level of happiness depends more on your mindset than what you accumulate. Ask yourself regularly what matters to you and is most important. This helps clarify and ensures you're focusing your time and energy on your priorities. Trust your intuition. Your intuitive heart provides wisdom, even if it's not always logical. Learn to listen to your inner voice and take action based on its guidance. Accept life as it is instead of how you want it to be. Much of our struggle comes from trying to control life and wanting it to be different than it is. Surrender to the truth of the moment to find inner peace. Learn to accept what you cannot change in life. Do not fight against difficulties and frustrations. Surrender to the moment and find inner peace. This will help transcend troubles and gain a deeper perspective. Do not worry about other people's issues or problems. Focus on your own life and mental state. Getting too involved in other people's businesses will only create more struggles and make it harder to find serenity. Look for beauty and meaning in ordinary things. We see in life what we choose to see. If you search for the extraordinary, you will find it. Focus on being grateful and appreciating the simple things. Make time for yourself and your inner work. Schedule time each day for reflection, meditation, exercise, or whatever will enrich your spiritual practice. If you do not make time, it will not happen. Treat this time as an essential appointment. Live each day as if it were your last. None of us know how long we must live, so do not postpone important things. Express your love, spend time with friends, pursue your dreams, and live life fully while you have the chance. Life is precious, so do not take it too seriously. The suggested reading includes books on meditation, yoga, spiritual growth, and finding inner peace and happiness. The overall message is to focus on what matters in life, accept difficulties with grace, nurture your body and soul, express gratitude, and live fully while you can. This small stuff approach can lead to greater peace and contentment.